So, what the fuck is up, guys? I'm super, super stoked to have everybody here. I First, I need to go through the table and get all... This is the most people I've had on a podcast, so just yeah, go around and say... this is the say, most people I've ever heard on a podcast ever. It's a yeah, party. It gets crazy. Yeah, yeah, So, let's start to my left, and we'll go around. I'm Devin. Devin. I'm, I'm Colton. Ian. Jade. Fantastic. That was that was painless. We're, we're good to go. So far, I'm moving. Before, it was supposed to be painless. Before we fucking do anything, I have to pull this out of my wallet. I have pull a, it out. I have pull a it out. business card that I got from you guys a long time ago. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody has seen one of those in a long time, or if you guys yeah. still have those. We, I think I we still, still have. Them. We need you new still have ones them? so bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> Pull it out so the podcast listeners can imagine them. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't do you know. Like what my card looks like. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. But I've seen an American Psycho. He's just like sweating, looking at the business cards. Yeah, no, it's super rad. Like I fucking, uh, I found that in my wallet the other day, and I was just like, oh man, they're gonna be on the podcast. I can't believe I still have that business card. I have, I have a bunch of those from bands like Sinker. So I have one the Sinker Swim from like two years ago. I think like, I might still have Westbrooks in my wallet. Oh shit, Westbrook. Yeah, I hear. That's another thing I'm excited to talk to you about, guys about. Because the, the scene, from what I've noticed, is very divided in that, like, you have little sections. Like, these are all the indie slash, like, folk people. They're, they're right here, all the DIY, whatever. Yeah. All that shit's right here. And then you've got all the pop punk over here. And then, like, the little bit of what metal, what the metal scene we have is, like, over here. And then there's like, a teeny tiny, like, Americana country scene. And, like, a really fucking minuscule rap scene. And But, like, there's yeah. not a whole lot of mingleage. So yeah. I barely know. I can name maybe like five local punk or pop punk bands off the top of my head. Like so, which sucks because I want to know more, and that's why I like you know I want to play a show with you guys. But Word. before I get into anything, um, I want to know. Just tell me about what you guys just released. Uh, it was our. I, I guess it was our debut EP. It's called A Static Standstill. Uh, it's got five songs on it. Uh, we, cool. It's an EP. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> they're all really different from each other. Um, That's true. I noticed that. I don't know. I feel like that. Kind of, I didn't want personally. Um, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I didn't want to write a whole like EP or release that was all sounding the same. Just because. Because totally. it's boring. I don't know. Yeah, I also kind of don't want to set like a standard. I don't want to like then put something else out and maybe disappoint people. Like, well, they sounded this way the first time, totally. and then they don't sound like this. Then what the yeah, no, nah. yeah. People fucking hate any kind of change in music. And it's yeah, the worst. I feel like if you can kind of keep people guessing like right out the gate, then or like I don't know, just be I'm not random, but. Eclectic. Yeah. Eclectic, for sure. Yeah, like, we know that each song has its own, like, personality. And uh-huh. we kind of try to focus on that and really bring out the personality in that song. It's also cool, like, we were kind of just showing, like, everything that we can kind of do in one small sample of, of songs instead of, like, yeah, just trying to write it as one big cohesive thing. Like, that's... That's brilliant. That's like what a poo poo platter. That's what a debut yeah. should be. Yeah, you should, exactly. like, like, It should be almost like a calling card. Like, okay, here's yeah. what I'm capable of, or these are the things that I'm interested this in. This is what's on the menu. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is what's on the menu, and then people can kind of like take what they want out. Yeah, see what people like, and then you kind of maybe go that direction yeah. next time around. And get them yeah. prepared. Like you said, get them prepared for whatever else is going to come. Yeah, if you time. prepare people for, like, that, if things are just going to be different and kind of, like, all over the place from the beginning, then... I feel like they're less inclined to be weirded out when something is not, like, quote, normal. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So that, if you put a saxophone on an album, someone's going to fucking pissed. That would be sick, though. Like, <laughs> I know. It, Bayside just did that. Like, Bayside's got a saxophone on their fucking most recent release. Like, yeah, super, dude. You know? So it's, dude, it's totally doable, man. Yeah, like- Get weird. Like, get weird as shit. Oh my god, weird is my favorite. I'm the weird... I think I might be the weirdest one in the band. Well, how does the songwriting process go for you guys? Uh, At least up to now... We're trying to change it, but at least up to now, either Ian or I would probably write, like, a skeleton of a song for the most part, and then we would bring it to the whole band. Um, But Ian always likes to say that the best songs that we write, which I agree with, the best songs that we write are the ones that we kind of write all together from the beginning. Totally. He has the most personality, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I totally get that, man. That's, that's what I'm, that's what I want to do more the next time around when, when we start doing some more writing. But, yeah. um, 
So that's super rad. Like, I know because some bands you'll have one guy who writes all his songs, and you have another guy who writes all his songs, and they just kind of like put them on the album. As, it's kind of been how it was like up to this point, but we're yeah. really try- we want to try to change that a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get out of though. Oh yeah, it's Fuck so yeah. easy to stay in that little thing. It's Wait, am I allowed to swear? I'm sorry. Of course you oh, are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Dude, I've like Shit. had podcasts before where I like I like there was this woman who I hated when I was like 12, and I like, called her a cunt. And I started like, yelling about it. Excuse your French. Like, yeah, I started like yelling yeah, about it. <laughs> like, no, yeah, dude, you can say whatever you want. It's the internet. This oh, the internet's internet. a scary place. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this doesn't end up on Reddit. Yeah, I read Reddit. <laughs> Shit. Um, 4chan. That's what oh, it's gonna be. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Is go to RadarVazeJr.com. Is that is like Rotten.com and 4chan still like even? I hope to God. I bet, but that's probably like <laughs> the deepest parts of the like internet. You I don't need. Oh. Oh. I don't, don't want to know. Go to the yeah, depths of the internet now. Yeah, the, deep, the dark web. The dark web. Uh, yeah, the dark web. Um, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so I already know the answer to this question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Who did you guys record with on the out on the EP? Fucking Matt Alderwood. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. The homie. The homie. I was like, I think I Most saw... Most troubled mind. Yeah, yeah. I think I saw a, a picture of you guys recording, um, and I like immediately recognized the house, and yeah. I was so excited, like, because I know that, knew that, like, with him, with plus you guys would just sound so, so, so good. And it Thank did. You. It's, it sounds so right. Thank it's you. It's so nice to have someone like Matt who just, like, at least for us... He he doesn't just push the buttons, but he doesn't make you feel pressured into using his ideas. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like he's very like open and gives. I don't know if you guys. I don't know if he gave you guys ideas. Uh, definitely. Yeah. We were definitely asking for like yeah. his input and advice and and stuff like that. Um, just because he's such a you know talented musician mm-hmm. and like singer and everything like. But um, yeah, he was super super cool and friendly and chill about like, um, our songs and like giving, yeah, advice on, like, how to improve certain parts or, like, how we might want, like, some, we might have an idea of, of something we want in the song and he'll help mm-hmm. us figure out how to, like, execute that. And he, yeah, but there was, yeah, no pressure to, like, do what he was telling yeah, us to do. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, giving direction without trying to, like, a producer who can give, kind of help you guide, like, guidance. Like, yeah. I thought that's what a producer should do, is, like, guide you, not, like, take over, you know what I mean? You don't, like, you don't want some crazy Phil Spector guy to put a gun in your mouth <laughs> yeah. and tell you what kind of, you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's, like, I think I think Matt was always per- perfect for that. I, I really love the hell out of it. How long did it take you guys to make it? Uh, uh, technically, four days. Four days. Four yeah. full days. Four sessions. It was only supposed to be three. <laughs> nice. But, uh, first day, uh, we kind of... We tried to record to a click, and which we've never done before as a full band because we were recording it live. Yeah. Um, so and that didn't work out. And I went home. And I went home that night, and Matt gave me a f- phone call, and he's like, "Hey, so uh, everything sucks. What do you want to do?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like nothing's on. I'm like, oh, well, we could live track it tomorrow and yeah. just like get it, you know, get it over. He's like, "All right, we can try that." That's what we ended up doing. I don't think it. I mean. The EP sounds just as good as I'd imagine it'd be. Sound, so. Dude, it sounds great. The same exact thing happened to us. Like, we fucked around with the click for a while. And yeah. Matt just told us, like, fuck it. Just don't play with the click. Like, because we were going to, we were live, we were live recording it anyway. But, like, we were live recording it with Austin playing Do We Click, which is something that he wasn't used to doing. So he's like, fuck it, dude. If it's going to sound live, it's going to sound live. Just, like, play it and be careful. Like, you're because yeah. we're not, and because you're not in front of a, a live audience, you don't have as much pressure to speed up or go crazy or whatever so it'll naturally kind of be a little bit more subdued and they, which is kind of what you want for that kind of shit mm-hmm. anyway. yeah I will say within all the coolness and the niceness and the no pressure mm-hmm. once he was behind the board and we had the instruments in our hands he pushed us a little bit I don't know I haven't been pushed uh, that hard before to be good um, this is super interesting what do you mean like how well, he really did what he could to get the best performance out of uh-huh. us. He he didn't like settle for something that was yeah. like normally like when I demo or something at home. I guess like I'm kind of like that's ah, fine. I'll just yeah. like I'll, I'll when I do it over again, it'll be like right. But like Matt had us do it like right. Yes. Yeah, it was like totally. It wasn't like he was stern, but he wasn't like rude. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. But that's what I feel like. I kind of need I don't want to speak for everybody but yeah. it was really good I thought yeah we didn't realize how bad we were until he told us how bad we were yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> important yeah, you dude. need that. Just, like playing like accurately and like 
He had, uh, you know, I thought I knew he's how to play coach, my though. Yeah, I thought I knew how to play my song, but I, I didn't. Like, he showed me, he's like, you should try doing it this way, and try like really, like I realized how kind of sloppy I might be in yeah. live, just because I'm, you know, in the moment, or whatever. But in the in the studio, he didn't settle for, you know, any part that might have like slurred into another. He's like, it needs to be yeah. on and and good. And vocals were probably the most uh, uh, influential on that because I thought like I would sing it the way I would sing it live, and he's like. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he with us, he always did, he did a lot of like, how do you feel about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then we and then we'd be like, Oh, you know, I, it, you know, it was alright. And he's like, You wanna do it again? No, no, yeah. yeah. He, he always puts a positive note on it. He always puts yeah. a positive note. Because yeah. like it would finish, it would be really quiet for a second, yeah. and you'd hear him turn on like talk back microphone again, uh-huh. and you just hear the fuzzy what do you think of that? <laughs> yeah. And then and it got to a point where it's like, okay, I'll redo it. Yeah. yeah. Rhetorical I, question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're really self-deprecating too. And he was not, Good. he was, he, yeah. yeah. Everybody should be. He was not about it. He was like, no, don't say that about yourself. Like, no, don't do that. What do you, he was yeah. trying to be very Don't make fun of Ian unless you are a nut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, it was really good. That, 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 yeah, that's right. He's made such us feel a better, person. even when like you fuck up the part that you were like, "God damn it! Yeah. I can get, I know how to play this fucking yeah. part, but I fucked it up five times." Yeah, no, he's so good about that because like Josh in, in my band is so fucking. He's like the coolest motherfucker you'll ever meet, and then when it comes to being in the studio, he's an absolute violent psychopath. And he just freaks <laughs> yeah. out like fucking crazy. Through like we recorded our album, he like threw a chair into the pool <laughs> and just like lost his shit and like ripped all the wires out and just freaked out and then we ended up getting where we needed to be like once everything was cool but Matt was so good about just like you know being cool and positive and making everybody feel comfortable and offering yeah. you know you know see what he could do for you like that's he's a, he's a dream and his house is in a, it's a beautiful place so and like his backyard nice. is gorgeous the backyard yes. was unbelievable and his, his dad was there and he yeah. was like offering us like tea like yeah. he gave Devin some yeah. iced tea we were sitting out there he's like yeah come check this out and he was telling us about the whole like koi yeah. pond let me tell you about this tree right here <laughs> like for every tree they're really cool like, though his whole family was sick yeah the best the yeah. dog can open the back door and yeah. let himself out <laughs> like that blew my mind that's how I knew it was gonna be a good record yeah oh yeah <laughs> dude it's, so who um I'm trying to think who did the art on the album or how was the art done oh the yeah album? Um, Andrew Morales. Uh, Morales. Um, I forgot how we. He we did knew the. Him. He did he way did the, under. Yeah, oh, that's he right, did the yeah. cover up for Way Under's last EP and that they put out. I was just scrolling through on Instagram and I saw it, and they uh, tagged him in it, and I was like, "That's some cool art." And I saw he was just like a local tattoo guy. Okay. And I was like, "We should try hitting him up. We need someone to do our art." Uh-huh. Like, yeah. We were like running close. So I'm like, you know, we need to get this done. Yeah, we didn't and really have like an idea of what we wanted the mm-hmm. EP art to like really look like mm-hmm. but um we were leaning towards like a drawing or more cartoon instead of like something like a realistic image so yeah when we saw his artwork that he did for way under it was like a drawing of a guy like on a yeah. boat or something like that and we're like yeah it seems like it would be like the kind of style we were going for and he was super cool like when we were telling him the kind of idea like mm. we had he like knew exactly like what we were trying to go for that's awesome that's yeah. super cool yeah one one super cool thing about andrew that i realized after working with so many people on like friends and uh on art projects and stuff he was so responsive and so quick about it like mm. you know i would ask him a question and instead of like waiting a few days to hear back a response like you you know was very common he'd immediately like i think I, I mentioned the, when i first asked him about doing the artwork he was like 2 a.m on like a Tuesday night or something, yeah. and I was just sitting on the couch. Oh, I should. I'll just text him. And I'll probably get here back in the morning. Yeah. It literally two minutes later. I was like, Oh yeah, dude! Like totally. Like let's do this. Like I'm stoked. Like That's what do amazing. you want? Like I'll, I'll get you. And he got me. I think he got me a, dra- a rough draft of it the next day and sent it to me. And every day he was like, How about this? Like how does this yeah. look? How does this look? And that's it was, it was it was a dream working with him. That's so important. I'll do it again. Yeah. That's okay. awesome. Album artwork is such a f- colossal pain in the ass. I mean, at least it always has been yeah. to me. Like, yeah. The idea of having to choose the artwork and what you want, and especially if you're using photography, like, and oh, like, yeah. that is such a pain in the ass. Because it's like, that's the first thing they're going to see. Like, this is how you're representing the sound of the album. And it's such a, like, that and mixing for me are the two things that are the biggest, just like, I just can't fucking handle it. It drives me nuts. But I don't know. Um, 
So did you guys have like a whole day like of mixing it with him, or did he mix it on his own? He he did it mostly on his own. I think at at the end of the last day, I stuck around mm-hmm. and he he went through everything. And and the last day, we also um, we asked us like, how do you want it to sound? And so we gave him a few artists of our favorite artists. Like, okay, we got like this sound, we yeah, like this sound. Too, yeah. And so he just, I guess, um, yeah, he did most of the mixing on his own. We weren't really around for it. That's right. But with with Matt, like, I mean, he has a heavy, heavy, heavy basis in the kind of music that you guys were playing mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. So that's why I was so excited because I was like, man, it's gonna be fucking perfect. This shit's gonna fit really well. He, we learned a lot about um, what we sound like that day because he told yeah. us like like a dozen bands that sound just like us. Yeah. Which I can't, I don't know, I think he said like the Get Up Kids and some other shit. Yeah. I, like, I want to say he mentioned Jawbreaker, but I don't know. I think he mentioned Jawbreaker. That would cool. Did he say right. Pop? No. Man. I don't know. I can't remember. I can't was, remember. Was, I like, feel like a dumb idiot, but that's There was fine. a handful of bands that we had like kind of heard of, but uh, never it was really all like, like late 90s. To. Yeah. yeah. That's all shit he listens to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, fun. it was so funny though. Uh, yeah, late '90s, early early 2000s pop punk, pop punk, or like yeah, emo we pop punk maybe, yeah, yeah. For, like, like yeah, well, Get Up Kids for sure is super like emo pop punk, whatever the I don't know, whatever the fuck. Um, I never super got into like that era of bands. I got into a lot of bands that were inspired by them, like Motion City Soundtrack, for instance. Motion like, City Soundtrack, like, <laughs> the first Motion City Soundtrack album. Still sounds like it could have been a B-side record from the Get Up Kids. Like, it's super, super, like, they really into the Get Up Kids. Um, Which I think is cool. I like when you can hear a a band who's, like, you have a band like Motion State Soundtrack who is absolutely brilliant, and they're, like, superstars in the eyes of, you know, ambitious people. Yeah. Yeah. And then you hear, like, their early stuff, and you can hear their influences. It's, like, it makes it so relatable. You know what I mean? I feel but. like that first record really, 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 really sounds like what is going on, like what like Justin's brain probably sounded yeah. like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It just it sounds like the whole record sounds like a really big, crazy anxiety attack. I don't know. I think yeah. that that's crazy. Yeah, but it's like a, I don't know. It's a really good representation of that, like an it, anxiety. Totally. Attack. I see. I'm I'm weird because my all time number one favorite Motion City album is My Dinosaur Life. Yeah. Literally, like I could get that entire album like tattooed on my body. Like I love it. And, like I don't. And to be honest with you, like I'm not even a big pop punk guy. But like that fucking album, for some reason, like every note is just like perfect. Yeah, I know. I Mine is uh, even if it kills me. It's my favorite. Oh uh, like, yeah, see, like, I'm like neck sad neck. rainy day. It's the best yeah. rainy day, like cloudy day album ever. Yeah, that that always stuck with me when you showed me that album. Like, so I, that's definitely an album I listen to on like rainy days and stuff. Well, here's okay. Here's an interesting idea. So let's go from Jade down now this time, and just Ooh. tell me like what. Yeah, no, you're not even prepared. <laughs> um, like, what made you want to do this kind of stuff? Like, what are your big... I guess, like, and everyone asks, like, what are your influences? But basically that. Like, what like what got you into wanting to do this and this kind of music or whatever? You well, know, play your instrument. I mean, like... 18 questions in one. Yeah, so right. layer it all on there. Don't, well, forget, don't forget any of them. I have to... I'm <laughs> <laughs> just fucking kidding. Uh, can I get, like, a PowerPoint? No, just, yeah, right? <laughs> I don't know, though, but, like, I mean, music goes back to, like, uh, Green Day, like, a lot of, a lot of kids. Yeah, for sure. Being, like, religion, you know, but, um, I don't know, yeah, I just always liked, I definitely just always liked punk rock, like, it was Green Day, and, like, Yellow Card, and then, when I... I had that first Yellow Card CD. Yes! (laughs) uh, Like, that was, that was it, but, um, I definitely fell into, like, punk rock, and was listening to, like... Black Flag and like, you know, the Ramones and all those kind of bands, but um, that's home for me. Yeah, like, Descendants and Black Flag and exactly. all of the Kennedys. That's my like haven of love when it comes to punk rock music. Yeah, Hard- hardcore, L.A. and Washington D.C. hardcore. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I don't know. I always, I always stuck with that, and then I don't know, like the whole like pop punk thing was just kind of an accident, I guess. Like, I mean, like Blink One Eighty Two is like pop punk, but they're not like pop punk bands like newfound glory or like well it's a different era like, it's a yeah, slightly exactly. different era yeah so yeah, i didn't like start listening to blink 182 with pop punk in mind mm-hmm. you know but um i don't know like i don't know how we like morphed into to focusing on pop punk so yeah much. oh yeah sorry i didn't mean to do that um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah mostly just uh punk yeah 
Yeah, that, that's rad, dude. But Green Day, I mean, it's one of the biggest. And, and anyone who tells you, anyone who's into like into rock music, who tells you that Green Day wasn't an influence on them, is full of fucking shit. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Like anyone who tries to act like they're yeah. too cool for Green Day, like fuck you. Like you like, know, <laughs> you were sitting in your room at thirteen trying to play Holiday. Like, Absolutely. Come on. Like yeah. shut up. Like you're not too cool for Green Day. The music's good. The music's good. Yeah. Like I, there's so many of those people I've met who are just like, huh. Pusha. Like, yeah. shut I used up. To be like that. <laughs> I, used I mean, to be I was too. That's why I have the insight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. always those dudes that are like in their late 40s that still like have a skateboard and they just live in an apartment and yeah. they still just listen to all that old punk mm-hmm. stuff, like original, like yeah. punk East Bay scenes. And then they're just like, oh, you like punk? Oh, I bet you listen to Green Day. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? Just like, fuck that shit. It's all, it's all about the underground. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. just like, Dude. Yeah. Music's music, Let man. Let the people enjoy things. Exactly. Yeah. Let, let, let people good. enjoy things. It's yeah, <laughs> right? Let people enjoy things. There is there is a real thing for that right now. Of like, you, you know, you can't enjoy that because it's X, Y, and Z. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's exactly. Ridiculous. There's a policing right now on, like, what you can and can't enjoy. Fuck that. I'm gonna yeah. like whatever I want. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, right? All right. What about you? Uh, for me... Um, most of my early life, actually, I, I didn't like music. I thought it was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I've never fucking heard anything remotely like that in my life. <laughs> like, up until I was about 10 years old, I just, I, you know, I would hear the radio, or my dad played jazz all the fucking time. Yeah. So, like, I was, I was like, this is kind of cool, I guess. Uh-huh. But I never, you know, I never really got into it until uh, one Christmas, my sister got me a Dookie. And I, I went to sleep to that that album yeah. every single night for like mm-hmm. two years straight, and that's that. that's what sparked my love for current pop punk. Dude, Green Day. Um, going to sleep to music is important. The albums that we went to sleep to as kids it are that's no, really important. I, every yeah. time, every time I listen to any song on the record, it always brings me back to like when I was eleven years old, living in Washington D.C. Yeah. Um, but um, after that, I got an iPod Nano, and that really just changed my life. <laughs> Um, Hell yeah, dude! I had a shuffle, one of the, the but but not the square ones, the rectangle ones. Yeah, remember? no, yeah. It had all this unused bullshit space at the bottom where there was nothing, and then one tiny wheel at the top. Like, there's no yep. reason for it to be a rectangle. Yep. Yeah, I remember that shit exactly. <laughs> um, and then I, I uh, slowly I got into Blink One Eighty Two just through surfing the internet, and a friend showed me like a music yeah. video, and uh, you know, I thought I was oh this is kind of catchy, kind of like this, yeah. and then that again like it just kind of grew from there. Yeah. And then uh, I think. Um, once I started writing music, I, my parents you know, bought me a guitar when I was like 13. And they're oh, yeah, it's, it's an instrument. And I was like, I want to be a rock star. And once I got tired of it and bored. Yeah. And then I put it down. And then a few years later, I, I went to Arcadia High School and uh, met a friend of mine named Jason. And he was like, hey, let's start a band. I was like, oh, yeah, sure. And I was like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I joined a music class called CMAS at Arcadia. And that's where I met all, these, nice. all these guys. Yeah. Um, I was in a band and then I met Colton and I was like, well, Colton and Fucking I, Colton and I, have are very, 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 very similar music tastes. And like, oh man, it'd be awesome if we just wrote music together. And um, because I'm a Blink One Two is my favorite band of all time, and we both like the same band, so that's and we're the main songwriters of the band, so that's probably why we kind of morphed from that pop punk yeah. area because uh-huh. we wanted to be, you know, like our idols. You to, and you have to play with natural too. Like you exactly. Play, yeah. you play, if you like, if you're sorry, I don't want to like get you off your topic. No, no like, worries. If you're, if I've noticed that like, just because you like a genre doesn't mean that you can or should play it. Like, cause there's some yeah. people who like, are like, they're, they're, but they, what they really love and what they truly love and what they feel is this, but like, they like, just recently really got into this, so they're going to put one of those EPs out and right. like, don't. Like, it yeah. doesn't, because you're also lying to yourself at that point. Just yeah. like, do what feels right for you. you exactly. Know? Yeah, so, um, that's, I, I I've uh, I listen to mostly pop punk bands. I do yeah. like some metal. Yeah. Um, I listen a very very tiny bit of rap. I'm not a big uh, I don't listen to radio a whole lot. No, it's radio. Uh, I'm not a big hip hop guy, but yeah. I don't. Know, I love pop punk because it, it's fun. It's uh, light hearted. It just and it just makes me happy. It's it, you can listen to it in any mood you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It's unpretentious. Yeah. There's no air. There's rarely an air of kind of bullshit or like pretense about it. But it's it's just fun and it's simple. And then there you go. Like, and that's what I think. Time. That's what morphed me yeah. into the person I am today. Yeah, so that's, that's rad. No, yeah. dude, Blink One Eighty Two. I Enema of the State. Like seriously, yeah. that's my album. That's Everybody my has a that's the album. Like because I don't know how old all of you guys are. 
But I was in like first grade ish when that album came out, and I was way too young to hear any of those songs. But I <laughs> yeah. loved this shit. I like I conned my grandma into buying it for me because oh she didn't God. know what a parental advisory <laughs> was. So like at a young age, I had it, with, and I got so stoked. And I and I never. Awesome. It took me literally like seven years to understand how to pronounce dysentery, Gary. Like I never <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. like <laughs> so like you know. Um, it, anyway, yeah, dude, Blink-182 for sure. Like, this isn't... It's just... It's fun for me to talk about this stuff with you guys, because, like, I haven't... Pop punk is a genre that I slowly kind of fell away from, but I still, like, get super nostalgic and listen to That's what I hear all the time. Um, it's really common, but, like, that's, you know... Um, I don't know. That's how... You know, anyway. Um, I still get... I'm still, like, into, like, what I love. Like, Fuck if yeah. I enjoyed it at one time, chances are... I'm still gonna like it, except for like three years down. Which like when I was yeah. like, when I was, like yeah. seven, when I was yeah. like seven, yeah. I really liked it. Like, Creed, like, Creed yeah. comes up on my iTunes every once in a while. I'm like, why do I still have this? <laughs> yeah. I, just, I never, I never go, take the time to go and delete it. But every like few days, dude. it'll just come up on shuffle. Like, what? No, dude, you know what though? I accept you with arms wide open. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, moving God over to you, sir. Um, I kind of have a similar story to Ian, like. I guess I didn't. Well, I didn't hate music at first. Yeah, <laughs> by any means. But um, my parents like kind of raised me on some classic rock and heavy metal and stuff like that. And when I was young, I really, uh, me and my best friend Jared, we were into like thrash metal. We were into like Metallica and Megadeth mm-hmm. and Iron Maiden's not really like I thrash fucking metal, love Iron, Iron Maiden. Maiden. And like we, my next door neighbors were like metalheads, and they were into Slayer and stuff like that. And they were kind of the first people to introduce me to music, like. They uh, they were the first people that like had instruments like rock and roll instruments in their house. Um, fuck. But uh, when I was like I think about eleven or twelve years old. Ah, oh, fuck. I can't remember how young I was, but it started with Green Day. Okay. I we my whole family went on vacation to San Diego <laughs> with another family, and my brother had just bought um, my younger brother uh, just bought uh, American Idiot. And we listened to it in the car for the entire way from Phoenix to San Diego, and I, I, I was done. Similar story to that for your I, I was done with it. I couldn't yeah. fucking stand it. I didn't fucking care what it was. I don't. I didn't know what it was. I, I was like, "Fuck this! Get this the fuck off the radio! I have to sit here and listen to this." <laughs> and then I ended up well, we stopped for gas and I ended up getting in the other car and I think they played Three Doors Down the entire time. I was, <laughs> fucking, I was yeah, even yeah. more pissed. But uh, wide open. Yeah, and then like a year or two later, I I stole my brother's MP3 player that like at the time in like 2006 held like maybe like 12 songs yeah. on it, and it was just like 12 random songs, and the whole, all the kids, the neighborhood kids were running around playing hide and go seek, and I, my little emo self had my headphones in, and I... What age were you at this point? Maybe like 10, 11, 12, some, probably like 11 or so, and it's I... Same as me. What are you like, what are you, 22? 21. 21? Yeah, it's about the same. Yeah, about the same. And I, uh, I remember just walking down the street and then just like clicking over and Basket Case came on and I was like, in that moment I was like, fuck, this is the greatest thing. Yeah. I, didn't know what, I didn't know what it was because like it didn't say anything on the MP3 yeah. player. I was like, fuck, this is the greatest thing ever. And I just yeah. didn't give him the MP3 player back and listen to it for weeks. Eventually I found out it was Green Day yeah. and then eventually I was like, God fucking damn it. <laughs> and then they became like the greatest, like my favorite band in the entire world. So pretty much that. And then my best friend Jarrett and my brother both played guitar before me. And I was like, I don't really want to be left out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's kind of just like. That's rad. Like, like, yeah. For, for sure. Green Day, like American Idiot, all that shit was so, I mean, was so, 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 so good. But I remember my favorite Green Day, like listening to Green Day story. And I think it was like. I was at a garage sale and I saw they had Insomniac for like two bucks. <sighs> oh, that'd be great. Sick. So I, it was like a neighbor. They didn't even know what the fuck they had. I just like took it, whatever, for how much. I don't even know if I paid the full. I think I probably like wheeled her down because she saw how much cents. I wanted it. Yeah, yeah, right? 50 cents. So, um, yeah, so. And then <laughs> after that, like my dad had to take us somewhere that was like somewhat far away. And I'm from Ohio. And because like I grew up in like a hick area, like, everyone just like laid in the back of their trucks. <laughs> so like I laid in the back of my dad's truck and like all the way down, obviously, to us to not alert the police. And I was like laying in the back with the headphones on, really like, holding them over my head because it was so loud and listening to the entire fucking CD like back to back to back in the back oh, of his yeah. truck. Just like, 
I love that. I love I, that. That's my favorite Green Day album. I mean, I think the best album is American Idiot, but my favorite is Insomniac. Mine is Nimrod. I, yeah, that's a really good one too. That's up there for me. Nimrod's great. I the feel Grouch like, is the most underrated song, dude. Uh, ninety seven right. is like the for some reason ninety seven has like is like the best year for like that genre yeah, of music. It totally was. Like, like I don't know what it is. Fuck yeah, I totally agree. And it's last weird. but not least, sir. Um. Well, sit up this way. Okay. There you go. <laughs> See, I told you, you get Posture comfy. Boy. You get comfy and you... Well, I, I've, al- I've always liked music. Ever yeah. since I... <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Well, I've always liked off. <laughs> <laughs> this <First>. fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember my, my dad is always... My dad's big... In, his favorite band is Rush. And okay. he, he would always play that or any other kind of like 80s or even early 90s kind of rock uh-huh. music. So I was always exposed to that. And then like... Elementary school, I was in the the band and I played the drums and I, I, I liked the beat. Yeah. And then I uh, I grew up. I got into middle school and I met Colton in middle school, and I was like, oh, dude, this guy's fucking awesome. I want to be in a band with him. Nice. But I played drums and they're like, oh, we already have a drummer, but uh, if you play bass, uh, you could you could you could play <laughs> he in our picked band. That fucking bass. And I was up. like, all right. He picked it up. Challenge accepted. That fucking. I'm I'm so that story breaks those the story of like. The musician who wanted to play any other instrument and then ended up wanting <laughs> That's the story of James like too. Yeah, really? like, I'm not even a drummer. Like I, I didn't get to say it because I was too overwhelmed with the amount of questions. I didn't know Sorry, what to yeah, 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 yeah. But like, yeah, I uh, definitely like started playing guitar and singing because like I... It's so interesting, like, to hear other people mention like family members like gave the music or uh-huh. their parents listen to music because like... Music wasn't, it's not like music was stupid, but, like, playing music or anything wasn't something that my family was, like, about, I don't know, we're just, yeah, like, yeah. like, and definitely there's no rock and roll or anything going on in my house. It's like a kid like, from school of rock. Yeah. It's like, put the electric guitar down. Seriously. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, yeah, I just, like, I was just bored on the computer, and I was, like, looking up music videos and I like liked yellow cards so I was like uh-huh. checking them out and I was like oh I this one kid had a Green Day hat I remember the Green Day's yeah. band and I looked them up and I was like this is fucking cool <laughs> like I want to do that so I started singing and playing guitar but yeah like in uh, our music program CMAS like uh, n- like I always thought drums would be fun to do and so when I got into that classroom there was a drum set so I was like I'm gonna try playing that and then it was just like really easy to pick up and there's no, like, every band always needed a drummer, so it was like, just start playing drums all the time. It's like, it's kind of like that with basses, too. Like Job security. Yeah, totally. exactly. Totally is. That's, that's that's what really I, that, yeah, exactly. I was the one to be a drummer, so I learned how to play drums. Yeah. It breaks and, my heart, though, when <laughs> people can't play drums. They're like, yeah, I wanted to play drums, but, like, my parents, like, would say it was too loud, or, like, oh, I couldn't <sighs> do this. It's like, no, like, the world needs yeah. drummers. Yes. Like, no. come on. It's so sad. You barely even started your story, though. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I was doing, so I... So yeah, I never mind, home. anyway. No, I'm <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I'm... <laughs> But in terms of, like, music I was listening to, like I said, it was just kind of, like, being exposed to, like, my dad's music, and then my cousin showed me uh, American Idiot, yeah. and I was like, this is fucking cool, and uh-huh. I ended up just listening to more of that, getting more into what Green Day was, and then just listening to bands like that, and then, of course, Colton showed me, oh, you should listen to this band, you know, and then I met Jared, and they were playing guitar together, and so they kind of helped me figure out the music that I liked, you know, because I didn't, I was like, how do I look for these, I don't know where to look or what kind of music, I didn't even know what was out there, Yeah. you know, I just wanted to play it, or learn how to play it, and, uh, but yeah, I just was, I was like, I'll pick up the bass to play in a band with Colton, and then uh, we went to high school, and Colton was like, hey, I know this guy Ian, we we were writing some songs, so I was like, okay, cool, and then uh, I was already met Jade at that point. And yeah, we were me, they were already we playing were already together. together. I stole yeah. it. Nice. Yeah, I had met Jade because we were in the same class, and she was drumming and also writing songs with some with some guitarists and singers. And so we had a band, Reality Check. And I played bass. And then Colton was like, "You should play bass in my band with Ian." And we had like another drummer, but that kind of fell through. And they were like, "Oh, we should have Jade because she's really good." Not I even. They, they made. How long was <laughs> Kyle in the band? For one. Oh show. yeah. No, we tried to do his, <laughs> yeah. his brother, but his brother he's really like good. he's just lazy. Yeah, he didn't give a shit, which yeah. is yeah. Kyle's right. a really good drummer. He can play like metal stuff. Yeah. And like. <laughs> but they, I don't. I feel like Kyle didn't have a say. I feel like you were just like, oh, like we need a drummer, and I'm related to you. this drummer. So <laughs> we're in the band now. Yeah. It was the total younger brother thing. He just didn't really give a shit. He was just I like, okay. Like, 
yeah. yeah, there was like one show, and then he just didn't show up to like the second thing, and then that was, and then I just hopped on the stage. Oh yeah, yeah. The dumbest thing is, it still pisses me off to this day when Colt and I were looking for a bassist. And I'm like, and he's like, well, I mean, I know this guy who like kind of plays bass, and like he made it sound so nonchalant, like he's, he's like, like it wasn't really gonna come through. I was like, okay, all right, ask him. Who and then, your hopes and then Devin came in, and, he's like, and he like played bass. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why didn't you say something earlier? He's like, I don't know, I just didn't think of him. I'm like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know, man. Dude, fucking lazy musicians drive me insane. We we've gone through the reason that we remained a three piece is we burned through like two of them and two rhythm guitarists in like like three months or some shit like that yeah. because they like just had other priorities. And like the first guy would come to practice and like practice then immediately leave. He'd come to a show like right before we were about to play and then leave. And he wouldn't practice in between the interim, like between and it's just I fucking hate that shit, man. Like if you're gonna yeah. do it, like don't be in a band to be in a band. Yeah. Like there needs to be something driving mm-hmm. you to do it. You know what I mean? It's just like anything that you're because like being in a band's fucking crazy. The idea yeah, of being so in a band fun. is absolutely nuts. Like it's amazing, but it's like I didn't yeah. Yeah, you almost have to. Th- if you're gonna take it seriously, you almost have to think about it as like starting a business with someone. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it really and it's is. just like, are you, is this the person you're? You, this is your business partner. This dude who doesn't even give, like even think about it when he's not in the band. Like you, you have to. Everybody has to be psychotic about how serious they take it, you know. But at the same time, be able to laugh their asses off and not take themselves too seriously. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a really weird line to walk. It's very gray. Yeah, total total gray area. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, So, who are your guys' favorite bands in the scene right now? Because I don't know. I can list. Okay, here's the here's like the the bands like punk or pop punk or whatever in the scene that I'm aware of. Okay, so I know Baseline. Fuck yeah. Westbrook. Fuck yeah. um, Sundress. Fuck yeah. And then on the more punk side, Kill Your TV. Yeah. That's and sick. I've heard. I, Whoa, maybe this is where the sticker I own my guitar comes from. What? <laughs> I have a <laughs> I have a sticker that I bought from fucking uh, Hippie Gypsy. And oh really? It just says "Kill Your well, TV." Well, I think that's just. A, I think that's just, There's like oh. 18 bands called "Kill Your TV." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, and then. Um, Dang. Yeah, that's really all I know of. Like I've heard of the Line Cutters, but like I don't know anybody. So like those are the only bands that I can name like in that area. The, the like, biggest ones in the scene. Are those the biggest ones? Yeah. Okay. Essentially, yeah. Uh, there's there's like Never Let This Go. Yeah, Never Let This Go. Okay, I've heard of them. Okay, I've heard that Expiration name Expiration date or like Friends with Baseline. Our bud, or uh, mostly Jade's bud, Miranda, uh, plays in a band called the Venomous Pinks, right? Oh, yeah, Oh, I've yeah. heard of that guy. Venomous Pinks. Didn't they just open for fucking Against Me or some shit like yeah, that? Yeah, th- I've never seen them live, crazy. but they're fucking they're crazy. They're going to be on punk rock bowling. That, nice. Those are a bunch of chicks that are so much tougher than me and would <laughs> yeah, me up and chew me up and yeah. yeah, spit me out. Holy oh, shit, God. they are crazy. They are so punk cool, AF. That's like, amazing. They're not pop punk. They're punk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's like, like a there's like a, there's a bit of a hardcore punk scene. Yeah, in is there? Yeah, I've it. kind of like seen bits and pieces of it. It seems to be all of like the punk punk that I've seen has keeps going in the direction of like metal. Yeah, and, like it's a weird. That's where pop punk is going right now too. Like with Did Remember and Nick. Oh yeah, like the easy core stuff. stuff and yeah. Like yeah. Easy core. And stuff. Easy core. Oh, core. Gosh. Dude, I know all about this shit. Like, the singer in my band was in a pop punk band for four years, or easy core band for four years. Oh, it's called really? The Semester of You. And, like, oh, it was boy. super, like, you know, all the songs were, you know, all the. So, like, you know, I, I know all about that kind of shit. So, Unnecessary like, breakdowns, like. Oh, yeah. All the, dude, they did a fucking Eminem's cover and put a breakdown in it. <laughs> Like absolute sacrilege. Let's <laughs> harnish it. <laughs> yeah. Soiled it. So, Soiled yeah. it. Soiled it. Uh. Soiled it. The most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. I was like listening to it and I was like, what the fuck is this? Why? Like I immediately texted them. Like right. what the fuck? Because the drummer and the singer were both in that band together. So I texted oh, yeah. them in the group chat. Like, the fuck is your problem? <laughs> like why is this? Why was this ever okay? Fuck is this shit? <laughs> It's like the someone fuck like, is up, like someone adding a new part to a Beatles song. Like someone covers a Beatles song and then puts in their own part. Like no easy <laughs> chord breakdown yeah. like yesterday. Like, <laughs> music should be open to interpretation. Like, like, do some ki- yeah, do some kind of like man. This is representing. <laughs> <laughs> you know who's God. really good? That's like though. <laughs> Matt just recorded with them. The good old Joel. I've heard of them. He told me about them. I don't I know. know. Oh, whoops. I don't know what they are. I don't know how to explain them. Yeah. It's like math. Yeah. Folk, punk, in, they're a lot. They're, there's a lot of things going on, but they're a three piece. And one of the 
one of them plays guitar, and sometimes they're... I think they have a song where he plays bass and guitar at the same time. Yeah, I saw that fucker wearing what both the? instruments on yeah, the stage. Yeah, he'll play the, he'll play the bass line, and then the guitar crazy. solo comes, and he's what like, the hell? And he shreds <laughs> super insane. hard. They're really good, though. Um, and Matt just recorded with them, too. I think their record... I don't know when it's coming out, but it'll come out eventually. They've been playing around. I saw them yeah. last night, and they were sick. That's amazing. What did you say, Matt? Turn space? Yeah. That's that's so amazing. Like, did you did you did you guys go to the Indy Five Hundred? Did you play the Indy Five Hundred? Ah, uh, no, no, I missed it. Unfortunately, missed it? we got close to playing it like oh, last year. Yeah, we should try to do that next year. It's right. It's cool. You play like five songs and then you move on. But it's like, but it's like you you don't have to bring your own shit. Really, uh-huh. you have to bring your own like guitars and stuff, or like like cymbals and snare, and then you just like that's why it moves. And now they have yeah. all that space, like they have it in three different rooms on that's that sick. campus. I so thought I saw just, that going on. Yeah, like, so everyone's just jumping from room to room to room. It's so badass. It's cool, yeah, dude. Trunk space is, is like the best thing ever. Oh Seriously. yeah, fuck yeah. And yeah. The people and staff and the other She's guys, staff, so I think kind. is the other guy's name, um, who run it are amazing. Like the Phoenix scene is so cool. It's shocking. I never thought that. It's getting better. Yeah, it never, is right. I didn't yeah. think a couple two years ago. I it fucking hated it. Literally, yeah, we two years ago or just over maybe a little over a year ago, we were playing pay to play shows, and every <sighs> show that we did, never which is like a bunch of metal bands, yeah. we were always the only like pop punk band. Like every once in a while, like there'd be like a really young pop punk band uh-huh. or like a band that's like very very new, uh-huh. and we'd play in like this big places like the Nile. Uh-huh. But we only sold like four tickets, so <laughs> it was just so empty. Um, yeah, it's just yeah. all and these metal bands. It's, um, we're so like over a little over a year ago before we changed our name to Second Go. Um, we want we want to make a goal like let's start playing local shows with local bands and yeah. you know let's try to get in the scene a little bit. And uh-huh. We've done exactly that. Yeah. So I'm really proud of us for doing that. That's amazing, dude. It's, and so like two years ago we hated it. We used to go out of town and play shows all the time because. Like, it was just cooler to go other places than it was Phoenix at that time. Now, A, that was probably because we didn't really know anybody. Um, and it, it takes a while. Like, I love it now, but I also know so many people now that yeah. it's kind of become a community. But it wasn't yeah. like that in the beginning. And people weren't as open either. Yeah. And, like, press wasn't as readily available. Like, people weren't always writing about stuff. And it wasn't it just wasn't as cool yet. Um, and now, though, it's, I don't know, I love it now. I absolutely love it it's now. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Uh, There's yeah. certain things I don't like. I don't like how, it, like... Exclusive, some of it is like you, you, yeah, there's not a whole lot of crossover with genres. There's like, like yeah. there's kind of weird little clicks, and, yeah. I clicks. didn't know that you could have little clicks in like punk rock, but I guess it's oh, totally. But, but what are you gonna yeah. do, I guess? Yeah. Ah. And you get that, you just try to be nice. Yeah, oh, yeah, I just dude, try just to be make nice friends with as many people as possible. Like, I love just going to local shows. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I've like heard of this band before like they seem cool they seem like a genre I like they yeah. seem like a band that we might want to play uh-huh. with and I'll go check them out and then tr- like my awkward ass will maybe try to like be friends with them like say hey yeah, yeah whatever yeah. but just get you know oh which I didn't I didn't bring up so that reminds me I feel so incredibly shitty because when <laughs> you guys went to see when you when you went to see us play at 51 West I gave like a bunch of shout outs to yeah. local bands and I fucking forgot you and I feel so like literally that night I was like I should have never shouted out anybody because I knew yeah. I was gonna yeah you started saying that you're like yeah. as, start, as soon as you started like giving out shout outs you're like oh god this is a mistake I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. forget someone yeah. yeah and then after that the, in between the next song I was like oh I did forget somebody and named somebody else yeah. it still wasn't her I'm like, not gonna lie for a second I was like oh wait maybe this might be me but like no nah, I'm not I wasn't even like that night I was like so upset and I, I, for, I remembered it until <laughs> just now like, it made me feel so bummed out about it yeah no I like, wasn't this even is a guilt podcast no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Confession. Was, yeah, yeah, no, for real though. Like, I'm so stoked that you do that. Like, I, I have friends that do that. I need to do that more. I've always been really guilty of like in the past. We're better about it now. In the past, we were so guilty of like just hanging out with each other. Yeah. And then we played. We'd go play, and then we go back outside and hang out together. Like, and that's such a shitty way to do it because you don't get to meet people. You don't get to be influenced by the other bands. The other thing, you don't get to yeah. learn. Like, by you know what I mean. So. Just be, being in the show and staying for the whole show and meeting it, people and talking to yeah, people. Yeah, it's so good, like, becoming friends with other bands and, mm. like, talking to them about how they do their things yeah. and whatever. You really do, like, learn a lot and take take a lot in. Yeah, I've learned so much. Just doing this podcast with other bands and being able to learn. Like, I learned that on tour, Love's Truck Stop has showers. Oh, seriously? And they're what? clean and they're nice. 
So boom, there you go. Fuck pass yeah. on some wisdom. Passed on. Write that down. Write that down. Jot that down. So, yeah. jot, 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 jot that down. down. Is so, that like loves with two Z's so, or something? Through punk no, rock, just, everything is possible. Yeah, just so love, jot yeah. that down. Loves, yeah. tru- loves truck stop. I think they're all over the country. Yeah. And what is it? They're loves, loves truck stop. Uh, You'll see them everywhere. Yeah. All over the town or all over the eight. I don't forget that. I know. When I go on road trips, it's everywhere. You don't see it at first. Like you don't. They don't always pop out at you. But they're truck stops, so like truckers have to shower too. Yeah. So you'll go in and and like. When we went in there, it's like twelve bucks for an hour, but you get a shower and you get like a toilet and a mirror and like a little sink oh, and everything man. you need. So like you get off, you know, you get out of the sweaty van and you get you just jump in the shower. And with us, we had this really cool guy who was like, "Hey man, like it's an hour for tw- it's twelve bucks." It was kind of bullshit because I know you have like four people with you or whatever. Like, um, well, the best thing, like, here's what I'll do, like. You take your shower and then give the key, just immediately give the key, and this is I'm tell you guys this, like, to do, be on a budget, shower, and then immediately have the other guy or the other person like man, waiting in the wings and just, yeah. like, give him the key and then just go back and forth and just use up that fucking hour and then give each other ringworm, but, like, who gives a shit? Wear sandals. Yeah, so, we but they do clean it, though. Guys. Like, the guy in between, after every single shower, the guy's mopping every single saw. Great. So... The love truck stop hooks you up. Dude, water yeah, shoes, water. tour. Yeah, water shoes. Like, Crocs, yeah. boy. Crocs. Oh god. <laughs> I won't be caught dead wearing Crocs. <laughs> what band is, is it? Knuckle puck. Where like the yeah. dude's always wearing Crocs, like tweeting pictures Jesus. of his fucking Croc, like just up in the air. Like. I've heard of that band. But I think I've heard of that band. Um, yeah, that's that's so amazing. Like, um, and I that was yeah. So anyway, I was listening to um, the the EP today, and my favorite half is this the latter half. I guess it's a half of five songs, but like the last like three songs were like my personal favorites. I don't know what oh, yeah. it was about oh, there's those. A copy over there if you want to look at it. Oh shit! I'll totally I totally, totally it. forgot that I we bought it for the visuals. Yeah, yeah, we bought it for the visuals. Yeah, can't you? It, it looks great, great good fantastic. Podcast. God. podcast listeners, the colors are so think vibrant. Looks good. I think it was somber. I think somber was a song that I really my fucking loved. That one I think is my favorite. My eyes, super super good. <laughs> what? My eyes. Your eyes. My eyes feel good. <laughs> what are you talking You're about? Looking at, because I'm looking at. You have it. to take the painting apart before you can put it back together. And paint it again. That's a whole. Wait, how it works? What's okay, human heart? Wait, what's works. human heart records? That's the little indie label that we're signed to currently. Oh, I didn't even know that. I based out of Yuma. Signed onto a little. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like our. Talk about that! Holy shit! I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> our announcement was pretty half-assed. It was, was like. It? Oh, by the way, just it was, was, was literally like that. It was like. This is our EP we're putting out. We're doing this thing. By the way, it's going to be on this record label. But oh, the EP. And then like, we never talked about the fact that we were signed to a label Like after that. like Not to not that we're trying to be like, we're signed to a label. Or yeah, any yeah, kind yeah. Of do, like Any kind of deal like that. I think but, that's probably why it ended up being like that. Yeah, yeah, honestly. That's probably why we don't really... We didn't want to make a big deal out of it because it's... Like it, it is a big deal, but it also it's just part of like the process, and yeah. that Sort of thing. It's and an actually, indie label too. Yeah, it's, it's just really it's literally a small guy. indie it's label. Just, yeah. it's, dude it's, in Yuma, it's a, like, it's a guy. Well, that's some cool shit. I mean, that's what Rubber Brother was, right? Playboy Man Babies. Yeah, label. I was, like, that. It was, just, it was just Robbie like by himself, and is now that? now that's something else. But I don't remember what that became. That oh, became okay. something else. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, I remember seeing Rubber Brother records around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love that stuff. There's so many little collectives, like Casa Butthole or whatever. <laughs> like, that's, that's a collective. <laughs> and, like, there's tons of those little things. I love that. I love when, com- I love, I love when the community gets together. Oh, yeah. Fight the ties that bind. Yeah. 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 Talking about collectives? Small yeah. talk collective? Yeah, yeah. small talk collective. Oh, is another yeah. fucking great one. Like, small Show talk. Show the forest. Yeah, dude, small talk is amazing. Like they've they've like hooked us up with some sick house shows. Yeah, like we got a show booked with them. Really, we're yeah. like, fucking talk about it. June fifth, June fifth yeah. with Sona in Bedford Falls. I think I don't know who else is gonna be there though. I don't even kind of. Know. I don't know who those people are. I don't know. They're, they're from out of town. I don't know where they're from, but they're yeah. sick. Okay, well, yeah, dude, they're amazing. I haven't heard them, but they're awesome. Um, they're great. Um, yeah, dude, that's super cool. Yeah, so they they put us in. They, they gave like we. Played some crazy like house show with Troubled Minds, them and a couple other people. Some someone was out of town and like this like this crazy little like junky house in Phoenix. Yeah. But it was super fun. Um, it was so fun. Like, we played in, like a kitchen. Um, Hell yeah, we've seen a kitchen show before. Yeah, <laughs> there's a stripper pole in there too. Oh, we did one of those too. Yeah. Wait, where'd you where'd you play? Uh, I was feel it in Tempe? Like, I feel like it was in Tempe. Yeah, it was it was like in Tempe. Beach. 
something yeah, like that? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Pebble Creek, Pebble Creek Road. Is that what? Was that what it was? Probably. Pebble Beach. Pebble I think it's Pebble Beach. Okay, I know that house. We played there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen a couple times oh, there. I know that house. It's like right by the freeway. You're in like the yeah. living. You're in the living room, and like you're playing in front of you is the kitchen, right? Yeah. And then on your right is the out back. Yeah. Yeah. My friend standing in the kitchen. Yeah. My I have a picture in front of that playing show at in front of that stripper pole. My old friend. Matt Levy used to live in that house, and now he lives with Josh and like a couple other people. Okay. Um, but yeah, my like I when my buddy was living in that house, we played a show there, and it was fucking wild. We played with a bunch of bands I don't remember. Oh, we, yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> that's how wild. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 like some of them, like one of them, bummed me the fuck out because the entire time that literally the entire set, the bassist. First of all, they went along like fifteen minutes late because oh, they couldn't find their drummer. And then God, the, the bassist literally for the entire set had his back turned to the audience. Oh, fuck G-G. The entire time. <laughs> like, I, I was like, look for, I mean, like, it wasn't even, it didn't even seem like it was in a cool rocker kind of way. Like, like you, if you're like Maynard Keenan from fucking Tool, you can get away with like hiding in the shadows. I guess. <laughs> I wouldn't pay you to do that, but whatever, some people would. But like, if you're in some like shitty band and can barely stay in tune and like no one cares what you're doing, like you're not going to make it any better by like, I don't know if he was just ashamed. <laughs> yeah, right. Ashamed of how it goes. <laughs> Maybe his bass face was just so bad. Oh, that yeah. The, rest of the band was like, bro, you gotta just keep your back. You're better just, off just, just turn just around. Work. What if he had Paper peed bag. his pants and he didn't want to oh, show Oh, yeah, you. maybe he peed his pants. We saw, or when we played in Prescott the last time, we played at like a youth center thing, and this, I don't, Oh, okay, it wasn't October, so it was like kind of Halloween y. Uh-huh. But the fucking singer of uh, the main band, like had a mask on the back of his head <laughs> so he was turned around <laughs> singing but like the mask was in the, and his outfit was like facing the crowd so that's I guess amazing. that's okay that's the only excuse though that's, <laughs> like, dude, that's amazing like I love the theatrics they that were so right cool now. like they were like they like Toso who are oh, like yeah. so theatrical and like killing it right now with the with, I love that shit. Yeah. I think they were called like HM12. Yeah, and yeah. They're, yeah. They're like they're like 14 years sticker. old. Yeah, yeah, they're like 14 years old. But I went up to go buy one of their CDs and they were like, oh, we only have albums like six and seven. We're working on another one right now. Yeah. And I was like, what? You guys have already put out seven <laughs> albums? You're like 14 years old. What the fuck? It, it, Where did what? You can go on their band camp and it just has like seven or eight of just like these six track things that they do. They just write and record like with their computer and they just put it on That's the They were sick though. So great, they though. were super sick. I love the time that we live yeah. in right now. Because you can just make anyone, an album in your anyone house. Can yeah. Anyone can do it. Like all you need like if you want to do it well is there some good mics. I mean like and you can pull it off okay. You, may, you might not be able to get like the Matt Alderwood experience. Like, <laughs> yeah. But he like, still records in a house. I know exactly. Yeah. He still records in a house. He has the know-how and he went to college and everything for it but like Still, it's all in a house on a computer, and that's what's amazing. Like, we just recorded our fucking album through, like, through Logic, I think. Fuck yeah. And, like, we used nice mics and stuff, but we just threw it through Logic and called it a day. Like, yeah. so I, I love it. I love that we can do that. Like, you don't have to. We were all we were stressing about a studio, and then it just, like, clicked. Like, why the fuck would we need to do that? Like, yeah. first of all, it's going to be a lo-fi record anyway. And like so, you know, I mean, which gives you even more breathing room because right. it's because that way if you fuck up, you can just say it was a post sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what, that's, what, that's what I told my mom every time we release yeah. music. It's punk rock, mom. Just put it's reverb on it. Just hide it all your like fucking Justin Timberlake. Your song gives it two stars. It's, yeah, I like that one song that's not actually your song. Yeah, my mom's <laughs> favorite song that we played for our, for our CD release show was a cover. <laughs> <laughs> what cover was it? We, uh, Weezer. It was uh, Porky Beans. Nah, I, dude, that was the first tab I ever le- learned. Same. Yeah. The first time I went to a tab and figured it out, it was the opening of Porky Beans. Mm-hmm. For yeah. sure, dude. Yes. Um, so funny. I remember when I first got into like like playing guitar, I, I always thought I was supposed to look at chords and not tabs. So I remember getting looking at the chords for like pork and beans, and like this doesn't shit. sound right. Yeah. Like, yeah. This doesn't sound the same at all. Like, and I watched the video, and his hands are like up there, and I'm like, that doesn't. What the fuck? That's not. Yeah. And then I found that I was just like being like a 13 year old. Idiot. <laughs> but, um, actually, I was 21. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, dude, I, I, there's some songs in the Red Album that I did. I'm not a big Weezer guy. People give me shit because I like the Green Album. But like, I'm sorry, I like the dude, hits. I like the hits. All their yeah. albums have something to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, people say that like there's some that are irrepre- irreprehensible, like Hurley and fucking Gratitude. But I like the yeah. single off of Hurley. They had the guys from Jackass in their music yeah. video. Yeah, nice. That was. So that a good was song. 
That's pretty good. I was just thinking that about song Jackass was today. Good. Because oh, do yeah. you remember those? I grew gen- up on that shit. Yeah, me too. But like, someone at work today was making fun of like someone wearing long shorts and calling cat cat or call that cat uh, capris. And that made me think of like when I was a kid, I used to like get like somewhat tight dickies. And cut the very bottoms off, like Johnny Knoxville yeah. used to, like, just yeah. above the ankle. Like, but it's like it's not so like it's like above the ankle, but a little bit more than just like high waisted pants. Like, yeah. it, they weren't quite like the beach like pants, or whatever that like the Dickies that Blink One Eight Two was wearing yeah. in all music videos. But they were like, a little tighter, a little longer. And I remember being like, I must have looked like an absolute idiot. And I, like, I forgot about that look completely. Oh, yeah. Until uh, recently. And I was like, oh, man, I used to wear those. With, like, the high tops. Yeah. yeah, with the high tops yes. and the multi guard socks and yeah. shit. Yeah, dude. Oh, my God. I love that stuff. Johnny I love Knox Jackass. Johnny a gem. The whole, of course the whole he cast. is. R.I.P. Ryan Dunn. Right? Yeah. Poor guy. I know, man. That really, he was my favorite, too. Same. I feel like, right. I feel like yeah. of everybody, he was, like, the best person. He, he was, like, the <sighs> best human, I, th- I thought. I love this sense of humor. Seriously. I mean, too. And he got beat up all the time by everybody. He was like yeah. the biggest, like He's the punching bag almost. Yeah. And then I mean, like, why couldn't it have been Bam? Anyway, um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, he's of, fat. Throwing shade. He's right? a piece of shit. He's what, fat. What, he's <laughs> a, yeah. um, I don't like Amy Schumer because there was a like the Comedy Central roast. I don't remember who uh-huh. it was for, but Steve-O was on it, and it was like right after Ryan Dunn died, and Amy Schumer went up there and was like, "Too bad it wouldn't have been you, or it should have been you, or something yeah. like that." And you just see him just like sitting in the chair like that. Was so funny. Like you're talking. See, about there's like, a line. My like, dead friend on like national mm-hmm. television. Yeah. I love like, you wish I would have died. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. I love cringe comedy, and I love, like, the darker the comedy gets, like, there is no, to me, there is no, like, that's not funny. Like, these kind of jokes aren't funny. I think it's all fucking funny as long as the context is right, as long as it's not mean-spirited. Word. But there's still a line yeah. where it's like, that's fucking mean. Like, <laughs> and, and yeah. way too soon. Like, yeah. Amy Schumer would manage to find that line. Well, the too. question <laughs> is, what joke did she steal that from? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've seen so many YouTube videos of her like next to like other comedians from like 10, 15 years ago saying the same exact joke. No. Yeah, I mean that's the same thing with Carlos C did that back in the mid two thousands. He ripped off everybody. He would go to see like open micers or comedians who were just starting to get big and he would sit in the back and he would write shit down and then he would like totally rip it off and use it on his show. Oh my like God. there's a big like side by side thing. Like Joe Rogan got on stage in like oh five and just like fucking heckle the shit out of him in front of all of these like, big audience full of people and this videotape is on YouTube. Him uh-huh. just being like, you're full of shit and this is why and like brings out all the reasons the audience is totally on his side. Fuck yeah. And Carlos is just like sitting there like this. Fuck that dude, man. Yeah. Like, anyway. I don't know how I got there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy, man. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> <laughs> so, and this is something that I, I, I just, I, I love things, questions like this because I'm always looking for new music to listen to. Like, just go around and name me like one or one to two or three of like the artists that you're listening to the most right now. Like, I'll start with you this time. You go this way. Like, just like, just not necessarily what you're in love with, but what you're listening to right now that you're giving a burn that you're like really enjoying. Taking Back Sunday. Really? Taking yeah. Back Sunday? Uh-huh. Is that something you've always been into? or you No, into it's it? more of a recent thing. My girlfriend just put on it in the car up. like a month or two ago, and I was just like, oh shit. What, what, so what's, yeah, yeah, like an um, album that you like a lot? Specifically, uh, I'm trying to remember what it is from, the cut from the E, cut from the team. Oh, the one from that, the, yeah, I know that yeah. album. The one with the kid on the front? Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, it's got like that turquoise Key without color. The, key without the E. Yeah, yeah Key, key without, without the E. That's, yeah. that's, that, I've been jamming that, and that's then like... Just Spotify has just been putting on like newfound glory, and I've just been like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just, just fucking just some of that good old pop punk. I love shit. that. Catalyst was always my big newfound glory yeah. album. I loved Catalyst when yeah. I was a kid because it was darker and it was a little bit more rough, a little edgy, the edges, mm-hmm. a little edgier. Um, yeah, Team My Sunday's right, dude. Louder Now was the album that I really got into with them because yeah. it was just the most accessible and more most like. It's really poppy. It's not as emo. It's a little bit more like, mm-hmm. like you know, rock and roll or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Take It Back Sunday was super rad. I haven't heard anything they've done after that though. I know they put out no. a bunch of records. And I'm sure they're good, but I haven't heard them. Um, cool. Take It Back Sunday. What about you? Um, I think my favorite guy in the entire world right now, and his name's Chris Farron. He yeah. uh, he used to front a band. He I don't know about used to. But they haven't done anything in a while. But he plays in a band called Fake Problems, and he's okay. like the singer songwriter of that. I've heard of that? I think it's like kind of folky punk indie That's right. type shit. Yeah. But uh, he, I guess he put out a solo album. It's called Can't Die, and it's 
I don't know. It's like the best thing ever. It's my favorite album probably right now. I've been listening to him and Jeff Rosenstock. I think those two guys... I've heard of um, Jeff Rosenstock. His soul, his the stuff that he does on his own is really cool. I think the two of them have a band together. I'm going to fuck the name up, like Antarctica Vespucci or something okay. like that. Yeah, yeah. But that's really sick too. Yeah. Um, yeah, Chris Farron's the best. Though. His voice is really cool. The record's really kind of... I feel like in- I have that... I feel like I got that on some kind of playlist because it sounds familiar. It's really indie. It it's really like poppy. It's not. There's not like any distortion on yeah, the record or anything. It's very easy to listen yeah. to. It's kind of dreamy. That's awesome. But his voice is like super like Dave Grohl-y, like shreddy, huh? Like rock and roll, punk rock type thing. It's really. It's kind of a cool dynamic. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, folk is all I've been listening to for the last. Fuck like, yeah, dude. A long time. Like I have like so many like Woody Guthrie, Arlo Guthrie, like cool. Pete Seeger, like all the up into the up into the modern stuff. Like none of that. Like I don't mind like the Mumford and Sons shit, but like, you know, I'm just into so much of that there's stuff. There's AJJ. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's AJJ too, but like I consider them more of a indie rock band. Yeah, now, I guess now. Of anything. Um, but I mean that's not to mean they're not great I have all their records like they're oh, fucking yeah. amazing um, alright what about you <clears throat> I'm listening to a lot of Moose Blood lately uh, same um, okay I was, I, was in, uh, I was in San Diego and it's funny I was on Tinder and I was looking at this girl's uh, this girl I matched with her her uh, her music preferences and I, was, I saw Moose Blood and, and a song and I was like oh that sounds familiar I listened to it I was like this is really fucking good nice. so then that it's funny how some t- like your some of the music that you love the most stems from the strangest places <laughs> where you hear totally. it. But I've listened to a lot of Moose Blood lately. Um, big fan of Neck Deep. They kind of like rekindled my love for pop punk with, yeah. with their uh, they did Life's for a lot of people. Life's they, not out to they, get you. They did album. That for a lot of people. There was a, there was definitely like a low in all of that kind of music. There's a lot of like older pop punk bands putting out the same shit or whatever and there wasn't like, a whole lot of excitement and then I remember, I remember like forgetting about the genre almost because I got really into all this other stuff and then Neck Deep came out and I couldn't fucking escape it like all this like they brought it way back like mm-hmm. which is super you know which is fucking rad if that's what you yeah another work with like Mark Hoppus and stuff so I'm really stuck for the next record oh really? is that Jeremy one? McKinnon on the first hit and then you got Mark Hoppus on the next hit god <laughs> damn it god damn it oh damn. Dude, yeah, Mark Hoppus though, man. I remember, I remember seeing Mark Hoppus in that Simple Plan music video. For <laughs> I do, <Dude>. he's <laughs> in Everything's All Right, also, isn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, dude, yeah. I watch like I watch so many music videos, and like every once in a while, Mark Hoppus just shows up. And one of them, yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> like Fall Out Boy, All Time Low, or just like yeah. I'm just watching a random music video. Uh, is that? Yeah, there okay, he is. Mark. That's yeah. awesome. What's Mark, up, Mark is just everywhere <laughs> in the music. He's pop punk dad. Yeah, he's, he really is. Is it a pop punk song? He, he's involved. Okay, yeah. hold on. So. I'm. I don't. Like, I'm absolutely gonna get to you in a second, but I'm gonna forget this, and it's gonna go off topic. But don't say <laughs> it now. What do you guys think of the new Blink 182 album? I really do like it. Really, I, Matt Skiba and Alkaline Trio. I've been finding. I'm trying to find a point to say this, but like Alkaline Trio is like one of my all time favorites. Like oh, they are favorites. my all time favorites. Yes. Yeah, they are. Fuck my, yeah. Number one. I have all. Of, I have everything they've ever released. My girlfriend Fuck. has a tattoo. Oh, like, we're really into it. The, yeah, dude. They're like yeah. the the best. Like Matt Skiba is like. Yeah. Oh, no! oh, you're totally good. You're totally fine. I was, it was bound to happen eventually. Uh, <laughs> Matt Skiba is like. A god. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I wanted to go that far. But no, like, yeah, I'm, I'm totally, totally agree with you. So I guess if anybody was gonna replace Tom, when I heard it was Matt Skiba, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" He's the only one. Uh, I I think it's good. I went and saw Blink at uh, Soma in San Diego. Mm-hmm. There, when they just got Matt on. Yeah. Uh, it was like it was their second show. To like uh-huh. it was, they were getting for a music with yeah. Travis or whatever. Um, and honestly, like at first, I wasn't always a huge fan of Matt's voice. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it just took him kind of getting used to it and kind of getting comfortable in the well, band. Well, it doesn't sound like his voice on the album at all. That I, I like think it's, it sounds like a they probably asked him to be a little more, little yeah. more a certain way. I was, really like the new album, and yeah. they keep releasing like new singles. Like the deluxe. I like Misery a lot. Misery is really Misery good. Is a fucking good song. Like I noticed that a lot of people are saying they really like the the darker way they're going, so the Me post forty four sounding thing. Yeah, but. I mean, I find myself listening to California way more than Neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck, yeah. Even the I band actually, is like, Neighborhoods? What's that? Like, I actually had a weird festival. thought about, like, last. I think it was just last night or maybe this morning, I remember that Neighborhoods existed because right? like, Wishing Well is one of my favorite uh, I will, songs. I like that. Ever. After Midnight's really good. And Snake Charmer. Yeah, I will like, say. We're like, yeah, Neighborhoods sucks. And we're like, I love all the songs. <laughs> yeah. I can't name it. 
fucking like any other songs like that. <laughs> yeah, I just remember um, that album even existed. That's so interesting. Yeah, from Bay but Bay, yeah, I, guess. I like the new album though. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot more melody in it yeah. with Skiba compared to like Tom. Yeah, that's I rad. I'm so it, I'm like it's cool to see people who enjoy it. There, I yeah, I've mm. always I, as soon as I was like hyped for it, and as soon as it came out, like I knew what it was gonna be. It sounded exactly yeah. like I what I wanted it to be, and it's just like it was so great. Um, the only thing is, I did kind of realize after a while they do a lot of just the woes and, and the nas. Yeah, I will the say woe, nah, nah. when I first <laughs> listened to like the singles that were coming out, I was like, "This shit is really generic. It's really yeah. cheesy." But God like damn. Blink's always yeah. Yeah. generic and cheesy. Mm-hmm. Like listening back to all the na na nas all over mm-hmm. fucking uh, yeah. take yeah. take your pants off and that's so like, cool. I'm I like I see. Here's the thing. I have a completely different opinion, but I love that people are into it. I love seeing people who have like different opinions to me. Like I fucking hated it. Like <laughs> I, yeah. out, out and out. Like I, it would offended me. I thought it was absolute garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, garbage. But, like, but that's mainly because of the lyrics. Because like Matt Skiba, like yeah. who I think is a brilliant lyricist. I, yeah. Like. Whoa, whoa, she's out of her mind. Like, really? Or, like, that. It's like dumbed down. Or, like, dumbed it down. And, like, and Mark, too, on that fucking song, like, Dear Head, Shut Up. Yeah. Fuck you. Like, that sucks. <laughs> like, try harder. But, like, <laughs> yeah. but at the same time, like, I think I, I'm. I like positivity. I like when people are into shit. Like, I don't have to agree with you, but, like, that's awesome. I'm stoked that Matt Skiba's in the band. I wish it sounded like his voice. Yeah. But, like, I'm stoked that he's in it. There's um, some parts where it's, like, there's... Comes like, through. It's, like, that's mad. Misery. That's the thing. That's why I like that song. It's, like, yeah. on his verse, it sounds just like him. Mm-hmm. Like, the version of him that I know. And his voice even cracks in it. And, like, I exactly yeah. what I want. That's, that's the like. only deluxe song that's come out that I that I can get into. Yeah. Every, I, I remember Mark was saying, like, oh, no, the deluxe album's, like, a whole different album. These definitely aren't throwaway songs yeah. but so far they just they sound like the songs that didn't make the album yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know? although I really do like the something about you I can't get my finger in that's clever that's clever and funny that's clever yeah. and funny but the most recent one they put out um, oh, I, I can't get you can't get yeah. it I was like one. but like I was an alternative press that. posting about it I'm like oh that's so funny like it's it's classic Blink I'm like I don't, I don't, yeah. I, just, I don't see the now funny a, in it. Like, it's yeah. ca- now it's kind of getting to be a gimmick, maybe. Yeah. It sounds like the tr- like it sounds like with that one they tried. The record, yeah. like the other ones are just like let's make a funny little song. This one's like <laughs> let's make a funny little song. <laughs> <laughs> the label was like shit. You guys need another stupid song for the deluxe edition. <laughs> All right. I'm Mark's like, like I got another one in my back pocket. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, but you know what though? I have to say, uh, like the one thing that like my girlfriend and I both listened to it at the same time, and we both came away with the exact same positive thing to say about it, which is that Travis Barker can still play like a motherfucker, oh, yeah. yeah. and that like yeah. that that's the one thing like like that's I, I like shit. I like my shit a little bit more raw than that album. But the one thing I was like, dude, the drums have so much life. There's yeah. so much vibrance in the drums in that album. I like, was stoked on so many of the drum tracks. Like. Yes, they're so good. Um, yeah, I was stoked about that. Like, and I, I do like the the big single on it, the first single that they released. Board of Death. Yeah. Board of Death. I think that's. I thought that song was pretty cool. I liked too. it. I wish Matt would just shave his head because, like, who are you kid? Who are you kidding? Like, <laughs> you know you don't have hair. Like, stop with the <laughs> gluing it to the side of your face. Like, <laughs> but, like, like, and I love Matt. Like, Matt's a god to me. But I'm just like, come on. But um, so now to get off track again, what was what have you been listening oh, to a yeah. lot lately? Um, uh, has. Hmm. I was jamming into Power Bottom again. I Fuck saw yeah. them the other day. Like, Fuck, they have, their second album is coming out on Friday. And I'm so oh, excited. Yeah, like, yeah. They have a song. What a great pen name. Right? <laughs> Power Bottom. Just a dude who can take a fucking cock. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what a great pen name. No, seriously. They're, they're so good, though. Means? Like, Yeah, ben? a Power Bottom is a guy who can... Oh, sorry. A Power <laughs> Bottom is like... When a dude's on top of another guy, and the guy on the bottom can really rock it, can just like, take it and work it. Yeah, that's what the take power bottom means. Yeah, that's what the power bottom means. Turn around and yeah, yeah that's what the power bottom means. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, all right. Learn something <laughs> yeah, every day. Yeah, so good, like Ben sh- or Bean, he sh- they shred like yeah. insane. Like it's it's. Incredible. What's with the vowelless names now? Like that's like the biggest right? thing. Right, like, swimmers. Like, fuck vowels. B- power bottom. Fuck, fuck yeah. those things. You dark. Those. Fuck those. Yeah. Fuck like, fuck that's how hard like Instagram tag is, and it drives me nuts. And I was gonna change it, but by, it was already been changed. Yeah. Like it's already been taken. And I'm just like, God damn it. Oh, you know, um, I will say though, uh, Turnover like are the, the loves of my life right now. They're, really? Their Agreed. album Peripheral Vision. I I heard can listen to that all yeah. day. Yeah, I've been listening to that a lot. That's a good one. Like, That's amazing. That album and like Bad Sons' first album, um, Language and Perspective. 
I can listen to every like every single track is like yeah. the best song ever. Like those are my two like favorite songs ever. Dude, you got you guys are so fucking rad. I'm stoked to play with you. So so to play with you. In yeah, June. seriously. Like June twenty fourth yeah. is gonna be rad. Like I'm so excited because. Like I, I just like to play with a bands I hadn't played with before, but be but bands who I know have been like who've been around long enough to where it's not going to be like a, like I don't know how to put my, how to work my shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh god. And like and, I, and I, you just oh you guys always seem like so much fun and I, you've always like come out and helped us out and supported us so it's like I totally got to get you guys in the bill and the other two bands that are on it are gonna are absolutely wonderful too. So who else is on the so show? So the other bill is gonna the other people on the bill is the Redemptions who is um it's. Anthony Fama and his band, he used to be in a band called Dr. Bones um, a few years ago. They were really amazing, but they're, they're awesome. They're just kind of like a, just a good like rock and roll band, I guess. Um, really, really fun. And then uh, Zero Degrees, not Zero Degrees, North, fuck. Um, Dang, I got excited Frequency for a Frequency Within. Frequency, yeah. Uh, Zero, uh, Zero Degrees is going to be on the bill, but like Ava's out of town. Oh, but um, we had uh, Frequency Within, our close, close, close friends yeah, from I've, I've California. Yeah, I've definitely heard of their name Yeah, before. they're from California. They're our super duper close friends. And if you guys ever want to, are interested in touring like in California without doing pay to play shows, yeah, they also um, they're they, they they are promoters who set oh. up who set up non pay to play shows. Fuck That's yeah. pretty called SoCal Indie Musicians. Oh okay. no, so, no way! I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. Like, they follow me on like Instagram. Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah, I follow Yeah, so SoCal Any Musicians is the singer of Frequency Within. Fuck yeah. And no, so, I'm excited. like, just hit them up. Like, if you guys ever want to tour and not have to pay for shows, fuck yeah. There you go. Yeah. They're amazing. They're Hell absolutely. Yeah. And, they're, and once they're on your team, they will always be like, they like they like all of our shit from like all their different accounts. Like, yeah. like they're always liking That's and commenting awesome. and sharing and like the, they put you on like their playlist yeah. and like they're so cool. They've That's commented really on like cool. a couple of my posts. Yeah. Post picture me playing so yeah, really anyway, cool. if you guys like, are you guys interested in like, like obviously everyone's interested in touring. Like, do you guys have any plans for like out, out getting on the road and the, playing shows? The label's been talking about putting us like little weekenders. Like That's going, out, going out to uh, like Tucson or yeah. like Vegas or Flagstaff, like kind of places close, but really try to get out of town and try to expanding our, our fan base and uh, get more people to know about us. We, we played Prescott like five times. That's, I've never, where? I've never played in Prescott before. Really? Yeah. Girly Street Coffee and was, then... And then that like youth, youth place, center, yeah. like okay. youth center thing. But yeah, Girly Street Coffee, that like, um, I don't know who's like running it now. When we first met, or when we first went there... There was this guy, Xander, who's, like, super cool, and he's, like, friends with, like, um, Trevor and Forrest, at least, from, like, Sundress. But, yeah, it's this little coffee shop that puts on, like, free shows, and then they take, like, donations for, like, the touring bands That's and stuff. That's rad. And it's super, super cool place. That's cool. Like, you guys, like, I, and I've been telling this to everybody lately because I can't stop thinking about it, but, like, Colorado is the place to play. Yeah. Fuck yeah. We I've got heard that. I've been seeing that we, a lot. We, we, went, yeah. we went to Colorado. It's good like, not, yeah, right? like, not to make and like like not to make it like a money thing, but we went to Colorado and we played three shows like all up in we we, we went from the southern to the to the northern we went all from Colorado Springs, Denver, Fort Collins, and we made more money in those three days than we have in fucking months like, really? locally. Like well, they, people give a shit in Colorado, and we have a good promoter too. But like they're <laughs> fucking wonderful. If you're gonna go out on tour. You should not come, like, you should do what you can to not come back with, like, money out of your pocket gone. Like, uh, if you're going to go out, work hard to Which get Which is compensated. impossible for the first, for the first little while. Yeah, Which is the first like, We actually came back with, like, we actually came back with yeah. money. And it was fucking crazy. And ever since then, we're like, Colorado, yes, you're amazing. Yeah. You, people give a shit out there. That's yeah. People cool. go to shows. Like, people have fun. And everyone's happy and cool and stoned and having a good time. And, <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because it's, like, an easy joke. It's absolutely true. Yeah. And it, but it's cool. Everybody there is, like, nodding to you and waving to you. I hear, like, people look at their feet because they don't want someone to fucking mean mug them or, like, try to <laughs> jump in the street. But Colorado, everyone's like, what's up, man? And, like, shit. Like, everyone's super cool. Like, you guys are... What's up, dude? I feel like I keep telling every band that I meet, and it's just like, go to fucking Colorado. <laughs> Yeah. So cool out there. People out there are really, really nice. That sounds sick. It's literally cool. It's not hot. It's not <laughs> hot. It's nice, dude. Like, that- Colorado Springs kind of, Colorado Springs is kind of like a second New Mexico. But, like, once you hit, like, Denver and definitely Fort Collins, which is the college town, like, so fucking cool. Oh, anyway. Shit, yeah. I love you guys so much. I, I had a lot of fun too. with this. Like, yeah, thank I really am so excited to see you guys play yeah. and play with you on June 24th. It's gonna be sick. Do you guys have any other? I'm gonna get this up in like, in like probably like a week, two weeks. Do you guys have any shows like after that point that you want to like rep uh, or out or any news? The next big one is so. June 5th. Um, which is where? Which is Trunk Space oh, yeah, we downtown. About that. Yep. Um, and then. 
We are also are gonna. We're also in the middle of getting a show for the nineteenth. Um, I thought it was the eighteenth, isn't it? Did, Welcome home with. Is it, is it, it's that Monday. Um, no idea. It's that Monday Pop before the twenty fourth. Yeah, we're working with. We're talking with um with third string. David from Never Let This Go. Third string. Um, yeah, I was just about to mention they do they book in Colorado. Okay, gotcha. yeah. They I think they book like. Next level up from DIY touring bands and okay, stuff gotcha. like that mostly. That I, all right, that's cool. Yeah, it's like a bigger promoter. So they yeah. contacted us, so we're going to get on that bill. And then that Saturday we'll be with you guys, Phantom Party. Stoked. Well, I, I don't cannot think wait. You have anything planned after? But after that, no, I don't think yeah. so. No, Sweet. Yeah, no, that's cool. I don't know. I don't have anything. Yeah. Like um, sweet dude, thank you guys all for coming on so much. This thank, is you so much yeah, fun. thank you for having like, This us. is really fun. I love, 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 love you guys. And whenever you have something else to promote, or you got a new album, or whatever the fuck, like hopefully by then I'll have an actual like studio stuff set up, and you all have mics, you all have headphones, fuck and then we can do it all again and have a great time and talk about whatever you're. You can become a about. professional broadcaster. Ah uh, yes. Fuck uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you busted our podcast, Cherry. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. All I my... love podcasts. Yes. I listen to them. Constantly. What do you listen to? Like pro wrestling podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, I am psyched to be on one. Dude, it's yeah, sweet. Yo, yeah, seriously. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.